right? But it's impossible to serve without it being a transformative experience. And, and I'm just wondering, I mean, it's, an, it's, an, it's an obvious question given to me by the audience. How, how did the war change you as a person? How did it affect you? What, what sort of uh, uh, long-standing changes were brought about as a consequence of your service and, and, and the experience when you came back to the United States and encountered a response that was very different from those of other returning veterans? I, well, I, I became a man there. I went over 21, you know, a callow kid, really, in, in many, many ways. But I, I came home a man. Uh, I learned that I have to take responsibility or had to take responsibility. I, I learned a couple of principles of leadership that, that, that apply in, in every context that I've had since. In this country, you never ask anybody to do what you're not willing to do yourself, number one. And an organization, I don't care whether it's a university or uh, the Dunkin' Donuts shop across the street, no organization runs well that its leaders don't check. You apply those two principles together and you will succeed. Marine Corps teaches you to take care of your men. I was trained that way at home as the oldest of five. What I can tell you is it not only matures you, but I really tried to take care of my men. You tell them we're gonna be professional, we're gonna do the best we can, we're going to use our brains here, but my goal is to get you home alive. If you ever get into corporate America and you ever get a job where you're in leadership, hire military veterans. They know time management, they're mature beyond their years, they're disciplined, they know how to handle and deal with people. Interview these people, check them out thoroughly, but you get a great candidate is, is the point I wanna make. I was, I was with a South Vietnamese unit, uh, an advisor to a South Vietnamese recon company, and the commander of that unit, Lieutenant Le Van Quang, was the most honest and courageous man I ever met. And we went through a lot together. And he died in an ambush. I was with him. And, uh, and for about two years after I got out of the Army, my, kind of my daily prayer was, it's not right. He was a better man than I. I mean, Lord, why did you take him rather than me? And after about two years, I got an answer. He wasn't punished. He's with me. You need more time. I'm willing to agree I need more time. That uh, I'm not as good a man as he was. So I, I think the, it would be a denial of, of what God offered me through that experience and a lie if I didn't treat every day as precious. It comes at a price. I learned how to lead, and I can't think of a better crucible for all of that than serving uh, you know, in the military. And I remember one hot morning, and I get this uh, fellow behind me says, hey, P squared, that was my nickname for Paul Patrick. Hey, P squared, uh, how you doing? I said, Skipper, this is the captain of the ship. He said, you know, you, you gotta stick around as, as air, uh, combat air patrol in case they send out any MiGs. So you're the last ones out of there. He knows my nickname. He knows my actual mission, and he knows how that mission fits into the... And when you're working with people like that, you just say, holy cow, I'd like to grow up to be like him. That's what I tell friends, that's what I told my son, that, that this, this was the crucible, and I'm a much better man uh, for it.